Welcome to another episode of Mouth Dancing with your host, Young. This is episode number 38. It's quite a milestone for this podcast, considering I'm doing it all alone, talking to myself for like 10 to 15 minutes a week. It's kind of, it's kind of, um, takes work. It takes work to just babble on your own for that long every week and think of stuff to come up with and things to say and to just keep talking for that long. I have to tip my hat to like broadcasters and people like that. Now I kind of understand why sometimes they sound so stupid and they just say like the dumbest things. Because they have to just keep talking. They're not supposed to let there be any kind of silence really. So they just have to keep blabbing and blabbing and blabbing and I don't know. I guess you have to forgive their occasional, you know, dumb thing they say or just completely obvious thing they say. Pretty chilly out. I know talking about the weather is always pretty stupid and mundane, but it's really chilly out because of the wind. I think there's a wind chill factor that's really chilling all of our extremities in particular when you go outside, like like your ears and your nose and your hands and your feet and your genitals. Genitals tend to get cold pretty quickly, it seems like, and they, you know, the whole shrinkage thing that happens there's a whole seinfeld episode about that where george talks about how there's shrinkage you know when he after he got out of the pool well the same thing happens in cold weather you know it shrinks your nuts and your dick i i I guess that's some sort of a defense mechanism maybe for your genitals like they just shrivel up to protect themselves or something i don't know but yeah in, in the warmer months like your genitals look way bigger. So if you're ever going to flash someone, do it when it's warm outside. Not that I condone flashing. I think that's illegal. It's probably like some sort of, what is that, inappropriate exposure or lewdness. What, what is that called? Um, exhibitionism? No, that's like, that's not the legal term for it, though. Flashing genitalia illegally. Anyway, I wanted to talk about ethnic food today. Kind of a weird concept in the West, you know. There's like normal food, which is like bread and potatoes and meat and like broccoli, carrots, stuff. I don't know, basically stuff that white people eat. And then everything outside of that is like ethnic food isn't that kind of a weird idea so it's like Mexican food or Indian food or Chinese food anything that's not really simple like white people food is ethnic food and white people always say that they're always like if I eat ethnic food it gives me diarrhea well maybe it's because all you eat day in and day out is like cream of wheat and like white bread with mayonnaise on it or margarine and like I don't know mac and cheese if that's all your stomach ever you know eats or has to digest it's probably a shock when you have to have some spices and herbs and stuff in your food right so maybe I don't know maybe improve your constitution eat some better food then you won't get diarrhea just from eating a burrito or something you know The problem is not the food. The problem is with you. I'm not saying, you know, all white people are like this, but the majority are very conservative about the way they eat. Like anything that's outside of the norm of what they usually eat, they're like, ew, that's gross. That's so sick. Ew, I'm going to get diarrhea from that. Ew. How could you eat that? That's disgusting. That's like a typical white person's response to anything that's not like pepperoni, pizza, and french fries, and applesauce, 
and like milk. Basically, like what kids eat in a high school cafeteria, they're like, the food they're eating is not within that realm of, you know, cuisine. They're like, ew, I'm gonna get diarrhea. That's so gross. Well, you won't get diarrhea if you eat normal food all the time instead of that highly processed, like flour and sugar and fat and processed cheese and junk like that all the time. So please, for your own health, to branch out, be more adventurous, and see what's out there. It'll be good for you, not just physically, but mentally, too. This is turning into kind of um, a lecture. I don't want it to be a lecture. I just don't want people getting diarrhea all the time. Like, if you get diarrhea from a little bit of hot sauce in your food, that's a problem. Something wrong with you. And I'm not ashamed to say it like that. There's something wrong with you. It's not okay to be like that. Don't just eat, you know, like the blandest, simplest food all the time and then talk trash about anything that's different from that. Because that really, really disgusts me. That's actually more revolting than the food that you're talking crap about. Let's be honest here. Your attitude is way worse. Oh yeah, indecent exposure. That's the term I was trying to think of earlier for when you expose yourself, you know, without someone's consent. I think that's probably what they call it legally. Like if you had to go to court for it. I don't know what, what that is. Is it, a, is it a misdemeanor or is it something more serious? Like is it a felony? You're flashing people as a felony. I guess it depends on who you're flashing to. If it's another adult, it's probably not as big of a deal as if it's like a minor, right? But yeah, I was never um, condoning that or suggesting you do that. So, so don't do it. Another thing I was thinking about recently is like soy milk and almond milk and rice milk and coconut milk, things like that. I was wondering how they get the milk from those things. Because when you get milk from a cow, you like, you squeeze its udders, right? And milk comes out. But like, how do they do that with a soybean? That must take, um, no, you must have to use like really special equipment to milk a soybean, right? Or like an almond. Do they have like tiny nipples or something that you have to have to work with like some sort of special tools? Maybe they have like tiny, you know, monkeys doing it in a factory somewhere like in a sweatshop. They got all the almonds and soybeans lined up and they got these little trained monkeys that come in and just start milking them because they can actually handle the nipples like they're too small for our hands, but for like a small, I don't know, like a, like a marmoset or something like that, they could do it. It's a really sad thought though that there might be these small creatures out there being exploited for labor reasons, you know? I doubt they're getting paid. They probably get paid in some sort of food, right? Like carrots or probably get scraps, you know, they don't even get good food. Hopefully they're hydrated, you know. Hopefully they're not in like small pens. I hope their living conditions are good. But that's something you should think about when you, next time you drink soy milk or almond milk, rice milk, coconut milk, stuff like that. Think about the labor that goes into it and how that's getting to your table. It's not necessarily pretty if you think about it it's kind of like your sneakers right they're cheap and they're comfy they last a fair amount of time and they're trendy and you like the way they look but there's possibly like sweatshop labor that went into making them and the materials they're made out of are not necessarily sustainable so you got to think about that you know you think about that, right, sometimes? 
Well, also think about it when it comes to the different types of milk you drink. I mean, there's a lot of awareness about cows and things like that, or goats being milked, because, you know, there's the whole vegetarian and vegan movement out there. But there's not a whole lot of messaging for, like, soybeans and almonds and the little marmosets that are milking them. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. Hope you guys enjoyed the topics I discussed. I'm going to close it out with a little ditty for you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.